The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord.
2 Corinthians. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who, begin, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one, one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. And he strictly ordered them that no one 
one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Pastor Josh said, I'm Pastor John Hertz, I'm one of the assistants to the bishop, uh, and I am the director for Evangelical Mission, which is a really long title. Uh, it simply means I get to have fun with congregations, thinking about what the future of ministry looks like, doing planning, talking about stewardship, trying to help find resources to support ministry in the congregations and what congregations feel called to do. So again, thanks for the opportunity to be here with you today, and certainly bring you greetings from our bishop, Bishop Philson. So, I remember walking along the beach a few years ago, marveling at the amazing power of the waves, at their ability to, to refresh and, and renew and reform the surface of the sand. The night before, there had been hundreds of people out on the beach. They had been playing, they've been digging, they've been walking here and there. There were trenches dug, there were remnants of, of sandcastles, holes in the ground. You had inventions for all the chairs that were out on the beach. You had footprints. The whole mess of activity. But when I got up to go for my uh, early morning walk, The surface of that sand was smooth and flat. Throughout the night, as the tide had, had moved in and, and the waves had, had washed over the sand again and again and again, with each passing wave, the beach was reformed. The holes were filled in, the sand castles were washed away. Footprints became a distant memory. And the process, you know, wasn't instantaneous. It wasn't like one splash came and did it all. But as those waves came ashore, over and over again, 
in, something amazing happened. Each contact with the water brought a small bit of change until that beach was remade into something new. A new beginning, a clean slate, a fresh start, thanks to the water washing over the shore. That water washed away all those activities from the night before and left this smooth, calm surface renewed for a new day. There aren't many places in life where you can see such a crystal clear example of renewal and reformation. There aren't many places where you can see, I don't think, such a, a clear example of the type of change that many people are hoping for in their lives. Unfortunately, thanks to the presence of sin in the world, because of the imperfections of this world, too many people suffer. Too many people have deep holes in their hearts have small marks on their souls, feel trampled on by the world. It could be the sharp and biting words of another person that leaves a scar that's hard to ignore. It could be the pain and grief of loss that creates a, a deep wound that's hard. It could be the struggles and activities of daily life that shape and form us in unexpected part of life in the world, which is why I think the compassion and the love that Jesus shows today in his reading from Mark is such a wonderful beacon and example of hope. For I think it clearly reminds us of Jesus' desire to bring healing and, and, and wholeness to the lives of God's people. For Jairus' daughter, for the hemorrhaging woman, Jesus' love and compassion washes over them, renewing and reshaping and remaking their lives. But the needs of these two women are, are very different. Each one experiences the power of Jesus' presence with her. Each one receives healing and new life. Each one is given a new beginning. For that hemorrhaging woman, it's her faith in Jesus, Mark tells us, that brings healing. She, she believes that Jesus can heal her. obvious from the text. Many people have tried to help or have taken advantage of her in her need for help. And they've all failed to help her. She's continued to suffer. Her ailment seems to have put her on the edges of society. She's probably considered unclean. I guess that she had a deep hole of hurt in her heart. She reaches out and touches Jesus' garment. That power washes over her, restoring her health, resetting her life, giving her a fresh start. In that amazing moment, because of her faith, everything is changed. Here's the way Mark recounts it. Daughter, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your disease. In the midst of this crowd, on this average ordinary day, this woman's life begins anew. Thanks to Jesus. And thanks to her faith. 
Now this young 12-year-old girl is dying. She can't come to where Jesus is. But his father, her father's faith inspires him to go to Jesus. My little daughter is at the point of death, Mary said. Come, lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Like that hemorrhaging woman, Jerry seeks Jesus out. Trust that Jesus can make a difference. He fully believes that Jesus has the power to bring healing and wholeness to his daughter's life. And although, as we hear in the story, things get worse before they get better, Ultimately, Jesus does exactly what that man, that father, believed Jesus could do. Jesus' power and love and healing presence washes over her. She's given new life and is restored to her family. Now, for, for you and I, the stories of healing and renewal that we might experience probably won't look quite the same. These experiences, these stories may seem a little far-fetched, a little removed from our everyday life. We don't do this type of miraculous healing all that often. As I said, for me, these, these stories witness and witness to Jesus' compassion. It's a helpful reminder to me of the, the good news that Jesus has the desire and the ability to bring healing and wholeness to the lives of God's people. As I said, for us, that healing and wholeness probably looks a little different than it did for the hemorrhaging woman and for Jairus' daughter. It's probably not a, an instantaneous process like that. My guess is, for us, the process is more like those waves washing over the shore. But the more we interact with God's love, the more we connect to God's presence, the more we are part of the community of God's people, Passion wash over us, making small little changes each time we have an interaction. Helping to shape us and form us and reform us into something new. Through the words of, of Scripture, through moments of prayer, through the presence of God's people that surround us, the, the, the power of God, the love of Jesus, the presence of while each of us has different marks, different holes in our hearts, different things that impact our lives, the hope I think we have as children of God, the promise I think we have as followers of Jesus, is that God can and will bring renewal and reformation to the lives of God's people, helping us to, to smooth out those rough spots helping to bring healing to those moments of hurt and pain, and helping us to see that, that thanks to Jesus, there are ways that we can have clean, fresh starts <laughs> and know that nothing will separate us from the love of God.
join the heart voices in prayer.
Vince and Brenda went into the Maine woods, but only Brenda is here. <laughs> so, and, uh, but she is here. She did a couple nights up in Bar Harbor. There's this uh, bar called the Thirsty Whale, and she appeared there with her comedy routine. So you might want to catch that on YouTube. <laughs> we don't know her stage name. That's the other mystery. Lots of community eating going to happen this summer. July 21st is a big thing going on. We're going to tell you that. But August 24th, we're going to do some. Uh, put that on your radar. The time is wrong. It's, there's some long things in the bulletin. We'll straighten it out next week. Here's it. Good morning. This is the last time you'll hear me say it, but I'm selling raffle tickets. This is the last one to buy your raffle tickets. To win, a win a win um, the uh, take flight book, the book of uh, photographs of birds that my brother and mom put together. And the winning drawing will be done at 11.30 this morning. And I have plenty, we'll have plenty of time to purchase a few more tickets if you want to increase your chances. Um, $20 for three tickets, $40 for six tickets. Eighty for twelve, one hundred for fifteen tickets. That's a really good chance. And two hundred, we have a couple of those for thirty tickets. All of this money goes to my Sands Hunger. And I'm going to ask Pastor John when it's time to be the one who picks the winning okay. ticket out of the pocket. All right. So see me if you want to buy. Uh, increase your chances and buy another some more tickets. Anne's such a liar. She told me she's holding the winning ticket last week. <laughs> well, everybody knows about Pastor Josh's birthday. We're going to do something next week. <laughs> no, next week's great. Let's do it next week. <laughs>
and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In your great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night that Jesus betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming to glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the will of all who share this heavenly food, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's pray that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth. 
please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Jesus, spread a light. 